have no plans. I don't make plans. I just do what I do. What was Charlie's advice to you today? Charlie doesn't advise. When are you going to see him again? Your guess is as good as mine. Does Charlie command? Charlie does not command anybody to do anything. He never has. Well, what's the outcome of this meeting? It was a pleasant visit. Was that the purpose of the meeting to begin with? Your guess is as good as mine. The well, we're getting an awful lot of guesses. I didn't want it to come out anyway, other than the way it came out. So you're planning to see him again soon. I hope so. When I met Charles Manson, he was an extremely charismatic individual. He uh, was attractive to me in that all my experiences up to that point led me to believe that there was absolutely nothing left for me to do and here was this person that seemed to offer me some hope in a somewhat hopeless situation and I know that might sound very strange to you that somebody like Charles Manson would present hope but he did to me at that time um, it, I have stated and in, in, in during the trial um, and through the years that I was in love with him at the time my comprehension and understanding of love today is not I was not in love with Charles Manson I was caught up in needing somebody to meet my needs and he seemed to meet my needs and I misconstrued my need to be that of love uh, I don't think when I met Charles Manson and the people that I was involved with that my intent or my purpose was to end up spending the rest of my life in prison or having eight innocent people dead. That was not my intent. I think that there was a combination of circumstances and situations and emotions and people involved that brought me to to the homes of the people that died. Um, again, there's absolutely no excuse. I take absolute and complete full responsibility for my actions. And uh, whatever that entails, whatever punishment, whatever my life is, to be is a direct result of that. I, I willingly, knowingly, um, fully take responsibility for that. I cannot change what happened. But I do ask that the panel members try to, if it's at all possible, differentiate between fact and fiction. I said and spoke several different stories between the grand jury and the trial. There were several things that I said at the trial during the penalty, of the penalty phase of the trial that were in fact not true. I said what I said at the grand jury was the truth. And I want once and for all it understood that what I have been accused of doing and what I actually did are two different things. I sit before you a convicted murderess, I understand that. I was convicted by a jury of my peers of participating in horrible, gruesome crimes. Um, nothing will ever change that. Nothing will ever bring back the victims. But I'm asking that you believe me when I tell you I did not kill anybody. I did not by my own hand kill any human being. I was there. I participated. I did nothing to stop what was going on. That is inexcusable behavior. That is something that I live with every day. There's something
something I will live with every day for the rest of my life. During the penalty phase of my trial, I had stated after consulting with Charles Manson, his attorneys, and my co-defendants, I was asked by Charles Manson to take the heat off of him, off of my co-defendants, and to state that I did things that I did not do. And I did that. I was still under the influence of Charles Manson during my trial. And during the penalty phase of my trial, I had stated that I had stabbed Sharon Tate when in fact I did not. And I ask your indulgence in that if you were to read the coroner's report, if you were to read the police report, all of the stab wounds of all of the victims were made by the same weapon. And it was not the weapon that was found in the house, which was the weapon that I had that I lost in, in the house. It almost seems pointless to me to try to make this point. It's like, what's the use? I've been convicted. People believe I killed this woman. Does it make any difference whether I did or I didn't as to my suitability for parole? And I think that to I think the truth that I hold to the truth dearly today that I live by the truth today that I could never feel remorse unless I faced the truth. I was incapable of feeling remorse until I really looked at the truth. And I just, I really, um, what's in my heart. <laughs> my lawyer is here telling me not to cry. You covered uh, an awful lot of material. Let me uh, ask you a couple of questions, then you can sure. continue on. Sure, that will help. Were you present at the, uh, when all these murders yes, took place? Yes, I was. All of them? No, I was not present at the oh, lobby. That you were convicted of? I was present when Gary Hinman died. I was present at the Tate House. I was not present in the home of the LaBiancas. I was in a car and I left the, the residence of the LaBiancas before they were killed. But you had been there? I had been there. Yes. yes. And what were you doing when all this killing was going on? When Gary Hinman was being killed, um, there um, after he had been wounded I went to a store and got um, I think hydrogen peroxide and band-aids and stuff to help clean up his wound because I did not know at that point in time that he was going to die I had a suspicion of it but I didn't know and again I was not please understand I was not in my right mind and again, excuse it, but I was not thinking clearly. Um, Were you present when he died? I was outside the house when he was dying. I was in the kitchen when he was being stabbed. I had stated at, the, his, at my trial for his death that I had killed him when I in fact did not. And I made that statement because I was exhausted. I was asked to make that statement and I wanted to get out of the courtroom. So I had already been sentenced to death and I didn't see any point in going through a trial. So I had 
admitted to killing Gary Hinman, when in fact I do know. Who killed Gary Hinman? Robert Mosley. Okay. Now the other murder, the uh, Tate residence. Well, you were there. I was there. And what were you doing when all this? Uh, when I when I was told to get into the car and go with Tex Watson, I did not know exactly what was going to happen. I was told to do what Tex said to do. And so I got in the car and did just exactly what Tex said to do. When he told me to climb over a fence, I climbed over a fence. When he told me to hide in the bushes, I hid in the bushes. When Stephen Parent was killed, I was in the bushes and I was watching. Um, when I was told to go into the house, I went into the house. I was then told to go into the back room and see how many people were there. And I went into the back of the hallway and saw how many people were there and came back and told Tex Watson how many people were there. Um, at one point, I was told and instructed to tie up for Tchaikovsky, and I tied him up with a towel. And at one point, I was told to kill him, and I was incapable of doing it. I had raised a knife to do it, and I could not do it. And at that point in time, Bochek Bukowski knew that, and he then jumped on me, and he and I got into a struggle, and I started screaming for help. Um, and when Tex Watson came and took him off of me, I was told, Tex was screaming at me and told me to watch the other woman that was there and that happened to have been Sharon Tate. And I sat in front of her until Tex came back. And then he... Wait, when you sat in front of her, what were you doing? I was, you holding her hostage? Or no, I was just sitting in front of her and... She's trying to get away? No. She was tied up. I believe she was tied up. Did she say anything to you? Yes. What did she say? Oh, God. She asked me to let her baby live. What did you say to her? Was she physically hurt at that? No. Just tied up. She's just tied up. Okay. Any others? Where were they? Uh, Abigail Folger had run out of the house. J.C. Brain was lying in the floor, and he had been shot. None at all. No. Who was the leader? Tex Watson. Female there in a power of position. Uh, no. Position of power. No. No. Uh, I'm, gonna, no. No. Uh, I'm gonna just refer to you. You already talked about this, and I'm just curious. Uh, in the uh, probation officer's report, it's page number eight. It says the defendant commented with some bitterness that she was not even present at the La Bianca thing. Nevertheless, she was convicted. I killed Sharon Tate. I don't know why I killed her. I was on acid. Whenever someone tells me not to do something, I do it. She said don't, so I did. As far as she recalls, the reason for going to that particular location was to help get Bobby Boussoulet out of jail. Uh, why didn't you take responsibility for killing my Bianca? So you took responsibility for killing Sharon Tate. I mean, you, I mean, you were very emphatically delayed that you had any involvement with La Bianca? Because I wasn't in the house. Uh -huh. I didn't enter, I never entered the house of La Bianca, so... Okay. But in this case, you just told us she didn't kill Sherman Tate. That's right. That's right. But I, I don't understand why you take credit for it then. You, I don't understand what you told me. Again, I'm asking you to understand that when I made that statement, almost 23 years ago, 22, 23 years ago. I was still under the influence.
influence of the drugs, even though I hadn't been on drugs at the time that I made that statement for some time, if you understand anything about drug abuse and the psychology of drug abuse, that it stays with you for a long time. Um, again, I was still very angry. I was still very much devoted to Manson and to the family, um, as I had understood them to be at that point in time. And I wanted to be a viable member of that group. I have no plans. I don't make plans. I just do what I do. What was Charlie's advice to you today? Charlie doesn't advise. When are you going to see him again? Your guess is as good as mine. Does Charlie command? Charlie does not command anybody to do anything. He never has. Well, what's the outcome of this meeting? It was a pleasant visit. Was that the purpose of the meeting to begin with? Your guess is as good as mine. The well, we're getting an awful lot of guesses. You wanted. I didn't want it to come out anyway, other than the way it came out. Did you plan to see him again, Susan? I hope so.